let's talk about Nikki Haley just for a minute there. She jumped 10 points uh, in the polls. She jumped up 6% to 16% in the last couple of weeks. This just goes to show war talk works. Uh, she has been ramping up the rhetoric. All she talks about is we have got to defend our friends and we've got to stand. We've, we will do anything, give Israel anything they want. Give them anything they ask for. No exceptions, no questions. Give them everything. Ukraine, we got to give them everything. War, war, war. You won't believe. I mean, she was bad enough with all the things that she said, but it, it actually gets worse. Believe it or not. <laughs> I didn't think Nikki Haley could get worse, but she gets worse. Watch this. Our military ready for future wars, which are artificial intelligence, cyber, space, and make sure that they have the equipment they need to defend themselves when we're at land, air, or sea. We've got to be smart. We've got to be ready. I'm tired of talking about a Department of Defense. I want a Department of Offense. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about a Department of Defense. I want a Department of Offense. We got to prepare ourselves for future wars, artificial intelligence, cyberspace. We got to get out there. We got to fight. Wow. A Department of Offense. Just say, Nikki, you want the War Department back. You don't want to call it a Department of Defense. It is not about American defense. It is going to be putting us on the offense. We are going to wage war around the world. And unfortunately, the worst part about that is her statement's ridiculous. She wants to march us into endless war. She's saying she wants to be offensive about it, not just defensive. This isn't gonna be about America's defense. We have to defend ourselves. No, she's saying, forget that. We gotta get out there and destroy, destroy, destroy. And the saddest part about this is apparently that war talk is working. That's the worst part about it. I think most Americans, at least most of the GOP, is starting to we're on war. I think we're starting to see that war weariness set in. I don't know what percentage actually of the GOP. I'd love to know what percentage of the GOP voting base. We know how the politicians are, but I'd, it'd be nice to see if the, if the voting base is truly flipping on that. I don't know though, because as soon as you mention Israel, as soon as you mention China, suddenly it's uh, war. Yes, we have to defeat them. We have to defend them and we have to defeat them. But um, you know, her poll numbers climbing from 6% to 16% really do concern me. It really makes me think that Americans are still fundamentally war hungry. And maybe that is why our politicians are war hungry. Maybe our politicians are just mirroring the sentiment of the American people. I would like to think that we would decide to put more effort and money into our own country. We are falling apart as a country. Our infrastructure, uh, homelessness, drug addiction, crime, We've got a lot of problems. Inflation, middle class is deteriorating. The poor are getting poorer and the rich are getting richer. And we've got the war class just constantly wanting more war. And this worries me that when I see her poll numbers go up like that, it worries me that this is actually the sentiment of the American people. But uh, maybe some minds are changing. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how her poll numbers continue to go. And the other big question is what would happen if Trump does get disqualified? If Trump ends up disqualified by this Colorado court and if other states follow and he ends up being disqualified out of, let's say, 20 states, um, he would not be able to win the presidency. It'd be interesting to see what the GOP does at that point. Do they go ahead and go with Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley? Is that what those two are banking on? Are those two banking on the political establishment on the Republican side helping disqualify Trump because that would be absolutely something they would do. They would go in there and they'd say, we just got to disqualify this guy, make him so that he's ineligible. He's taken over the Republican party. We can't have that. We need to return to normalcy. We need to return to warmonger rhetoric. And then you've got DeSantis and Nikki Haley, definitely on the war tour, Nikki Haley more so. One of them, you know, maybe because they would be runner up, they would end up being the GOP nominee in the end. Um, I'm not sure, or, or Trump is the candidate, but he's not, he doesn't have his name on all the ballots and people have to write him in. In this case, I think RFK Jr., this would actually benefit him quite a bit. A lot of people looking to vote for somebody who are on the Republican side would maybe then turn to his candidacy as an independent. That's possible. Uh, wow, this is going to be a wild election season. That is all I know.